and we are finally back with part three. This is the final video concerning the entirety of the course overview from my perspective as a third year graduate entry student. Throughout the three videos, I hope I have covered everything that you guys need to know and I hope you guys are well informed. Please don't hesitate to drop any questions in the comments, but for now, let's get into it. Oh, now we are on an interesting topic, the teachers themselves. So in terms of the teaching, it's all in English. So the course is absolutely in English. The teachers can speak uh, a good quality of English. Obviously, they will struggle a bit with a few words, but they understand the meanings and you can help them out here and there. But it is very, very good and very, very good standard of teaching. So if you think of teaching in the UK, they're very sort of acceptable to being questioned and sort of impartial to being disagreed with and sort of conversing with you in a friendly sort of manner. That's not saying the teachers here are not friendly. They are very friendly if you get on their good side. <laughs> but the teaching here is a very sort of old style, hierarchical, authoritative type of teaching. This is sort of coming from my friend who has um, studied here in the past two years since the first year. And it's sort of, you have to show quite a lot of respect to these teachers as they take it quite personally if you don't. And it would be quite bad for you in the long run. Essentially coming from an ethnic family, um, I understand this concept and those of you that come from ethnic minority families, you will understand this concept. But yeah, it's sort of a old style standard of teaching in terms of uniform. You guys have to come in wearing a lab coat to each lesson. You've got to show the standard sign of respect of standard sign of respect of standing up whenever a teacher walks in, addressing them as doctor, professor, etc and just maintaining a good relationship with them. I mean, I don't really know how to describe it properly, but you'll understand when you get here. It's, it's a sort of more formal and more strict kind of atmosphere than in, if it was a UK med school. The teachers here are doctors and practicing doctors themselves. So sometimes they will cancel lectures and reschedule them because of work that they've had come up in terms of autopsies. I'm just giving examples here. But in terms of clinics they run, in terms of patients they have to see, etc, etc. But one key thing is just because you are a good doctor doesn't mean you are a automatically good teacher. But again, that means you guys have to be adaptable and you wouldn't be a good doctor if you weren't adaptable, etc, etc. So just touching back on the previous point in terms of roastings, grillings, or whatever, they are quite <laughs> volatile uh, if you don't prepare any work for your lectures. I mean, this is a medicine degree, but um, you know, some people think it's a bit of a dos. I don't really know how they get through it, but if you Think of it as a mess about you're not going to get very far here. You're going to get absolutely roasted. It's not going to be a very pleasant experience for you. And if you are seen not putting in the time and the work, the lecturers and the doctors will sort of give the bare minimum, essentially, because it's sort of an insult to them if they are taking time out of their practice and trying to give you the best and you're not reciprocating. And this sort of leads me on to my almost penultimate points but this is sort of your exams and I don't know how it runs in the first and second years but in terms of the third year and the and the state exam which is very similar to the US step one exam it's called the croc one um, and just on that you can use resources from both the US step one and the croc one resources they give you to practice as much as you can but Back to the key point, if you do not attend your lectures, if you do not contribute in your lectures, and if you don't maintain a satisfactory average grade, again, what I've heard is they won't register you for this CROC exam. 
And then you're in a bit of a pickle because you've just wasted your year. But again, this is just what I've heard. It's hearsay. Again, please do not shoot me. Find out for yourself, etc., etc. Yeah, so um, I think that's the majority of the stuff taken care of. Just speaking to you about the student union now, they put on quite a few extra classes by UK doctors. Um, so these are F1, F2 doctors that give lectures on clinical skills and clinical practice still in use in the UK. Very, very, very useful lectures that you can attend. Again, these aren't recorded from what I gather. So you guys can do whatever you want. I'm not telling you to do anything. And I think the last lecture that I attended was the orthopedic lecture. I want to go into orthopedics and sports medicine. So that was of interest to me. And sort of extra activities such as get togethers and all your general student union -y sort of stuff. It was formed, I think only last year or the year before, I can't remember, but it's fairly new. Many societies are sprouting up here and there, you can start your own. But considering this is medicine, I don't really think you'd want the hassle. And yeah, I think that brings me close to the end of this video. What I'm gonna do now, another run through um, via the med student notes platform, just a couple of notes extra here and there. Uh, and then just a quick summary. So yeah, just to summarize, I think that it's a very good place to study, but it is hard work, you know? I mean, it would be a lot, I mean, I would say 100% better if you did get into a UK medical school, um, because just of the convenience sake, you know, everything is all in one place. You don't have to work as hard in terms of digging for resources, contact your lectures, etc., all that sort of stuff. But if you are struggling to get into a medical school in the UK, as I found out that it is extremely difficult to get into a graduate medical school in the UK because you are essentially playing with the big fish. And what I mean by that is you are playing with people that have spent X amount of years in industry or X amount of years in a biomedical or clinical field and want to return and do medicine. And it makes it a lot harder for you as a fresh graduate or whoever you are to get into a medical school in the UK. So yeah, Europe is an option. I think it's definitely good, but you do have to work hard and that is medicine. But the main aim of this um, video is to guys, just keep you informed, to be honest. And yeah, it's a brand new country, brand new culture, language, everything, you know? Uh, and, you know, it's just come along on this medical journey with me, you know? One of them ones, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But that's it. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. Oh, before I forget, the next key videos that I will be uploading are to do with visa instructions, application instructions and all that sort of stuff and how to start up here, etc. this, that and the other. But I'm also going to be uploading some more vlogs and some more activities that you can do in Dnipro. Obviously, when I get the time, of course, I'll try and aim between the two and three week mark. And... I'll actually try and get my drone up to take a few more aerial photography shots, a um, bit more videography shots. And what I'm definitely looking forward to is when it does start snowing a lot, is getting that drone up over the Dnepr River. That'll be fun. <laughs> but yeah, see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.